Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has been blessed with the most concise and the most precise speech. So when we look at the precious pearls that come out of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم's mouth, we find that many of its ahadith are in fact treasure chests of wisdom. The words might be small, but the meanings behind them are vast. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, advised us in one hadith to take advantage of five matters. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Take advantage of five matters before five other matters. Your youth before you become old. Your health before you fall sick. Your wealth before you become poor. Your free time before you become busy. And your life before your death. This lesson from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reminds us of the importance of being thankful for our blessings and making the most of the time that we've been given. We're constantly reminded throughout the Qur'an and the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that time is passing faster than we realise, so we must make wise choices. We're told in the Qur'an that when we stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment, it will seem as if time has passed so quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an that we will say, We stayed a day or part of a day. Ask of those who keep account. And many people will be there begging Allah for more time so that they can go back and make things right. Again in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that these people will say, Until when death comes to one of them, he says, my Lord, send me back. So, before time runs out, we must take advantage of these five matters. Let's look at them one by one. So firstly, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, your youth before you become old. When we're young, we take our youth and energy for granted. We feel as if we have all the time in the world to fulfill our dreams and make our mark on the world. But the future creeps up on us slowly. Grey hairs start to appear, our responsibilities pile up, and our energy levels drop. Our youthful energy and hope should be used while it's at its peak to help others. Youthfulness is a time when a person is the most energetic, when she lays out the foundations for their future, and when she plans her life. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to take advantage of this time before the time comes when you don't have that enthusiasm and when you don't have that zeal or that energy and outlook. The enthusiasm and energy that you have been blessed with will never again be given to you after this age. So therefore, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to seize the moment and take advantage of it we know in another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Seven are the people that will be sheltered on the Day of Judgment, the day in which there is no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the seven people that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mentioned was a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's look at the second piece of advice that we need to take advantage of, your health before you fall sick. You know, health is another thing that people take for granted until they actually lose it. And it's not just that you will get ill when you're old. Even young people may experience an injury and illness which limits their ability to fulfill their dreams and responsibilities. I'm sure many of us have known people in that situation. I myself had a friend whose daughter, she was only 20. She was in her second year at university and she developed leukemia and subhanAllah, she was in and out of hospital for about two years. So subhanAllah, even young people can experience illness and it will limit, limit their abilities. Pain and sickness are a test from Allah. And one who endures with patience and faith, we're told, will be rewarded. But human beings are frail and we never know when our good health will be taken from us. Our healthy bodies and minds are a blessing that we shouldn't waste. Once. A person came to Yunus ibn Ubay, one of the scholars of the Salaf, and he complained of extreme poverty because he had not been blessed with that much. Yunus ibn Ubay asked him, Would you be willing to give away your sight for a certain amount of money? 
The man said, No, of course not. Then he asked him, Would you be willing to give your hands away? He said, No, of course not. He asked, Your feet? He said, Of course not. When he finished, he said, I see that you have hundreds of thousands of millions of blessings, yet you are complaining of poverty. We have our full faculties. We can see, we can hear. Look at some, someone who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested with blindness. It is a very severe test and that is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said in an authentic hadith, there are two things. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes them away from a person and they are patient, then that person is guaranteed Jannah. And these two things are the two eyes. In other words, if a person is blind, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing them. And if they are patient, then Allah will reward that person with Jannah. So then how about a person who has been blessed, not just with eyesight, but with hearing, with health, with arms, with limbs, with energy, with vitality, with enthusiasm, enthusiasm and so many other things. If we have, then should we not appreciate the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we not realize how sweet health is? You know, there's a, a narration by Dawood alayhi salam, who said that health is the crown Sorry, health is a crown on the head of the healthy that only the sick can see. So when we are blessed with healthy functioning bodies, shouldn't we use them for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you can walk without pain, if you can breathe without difficulty, all of these things are blessings from Allah. The least we can do is the obligatory actions like the salah five times a day, like fasting in Ramadan, like inshallah one day going on hajj, all of these require that we use our physical bodies. And this is the least that we can do, the bare minimum. Of course, the more that you do, the better it is for you. So the third piece of advice, your wealth before you become poor. Wealth is another blessing that Allah gives some people. Wealth can take the form of money, yes, but it can also be our knowledge, it can be our skills, and it can be our time. A believer should give as much as possible in charity while they still have something to give. And we shouldn't fear poverty, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. Rather, we should use our wealth to worship and to please Allah. The Quran says, The likeness of those who spend their money for Allah's sake is as the likeness of a grain of corn. It grows seven ears. Every single ear has a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies and increases the reward for whom he wills. Allah is all sufficient for his creature's needs, the all-knower. And remember that feeding your family is an ibadah, is an act of worship, if you are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are doing it, for the sake of Allah, you will be rewarded. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that a morsel of food, if you put it in your wife's mouth, this will be a reward for you on the Day of Judgment. Now, whether you are Muslim or not Muslim, you have family. But will everybody be rewarded for that? No, because only the one who does it remembering Allah, thinking about Allah, and doing so for the sake of Allah will be rewarded. Ask yourself, if the last time you went shopping, was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your mind? Did you think of doing this for the sake of Allah? When you picked up the milk, when you picked up the bread, was your heart thinking, oh Allah, I am buying this food through halal money and this is halal food because I want to feed my family and this is an obligation that you have put upon me and therefore I am doing it for your sake. Who amongst us has this in their mind? But it's such a simple act to get your intention straight before you do an action. You can imbue that action with reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say that we have spent something for the sake of Allah, we're not just talking about money. So yes, zakah, sadaqah and charity. Of course, giving in charity is one of the best things that you can do with your money. But don't forget that the money that you spend can be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. That means that you're thinking of Allah. 
spending, you know, when you're buying your groceries, spending for the sake of Allah and having the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the fourth piece of advice, your free time before you become busy. Time is something that we all of us have, even if we think we're too busy to do anything other than what we're doing. We shouldn't be using our precious time in useless activities that have no benefit to us. Sometimes you hear people saying, oh, I've got a couple of hours, I'll just kill a bit of time. Don't kill time. Use your time instead. And yes, relaxation and entertainment are important to the human spirit, but we must be careful to balance our time with other fruitful activities. In other words, use your free time wisely. There's a saying that, you know, in the corporate world, time is money. In other words, that, you know, you can use your time to make money, to earn money. But actually, for a believer, time is even more precious than money. Money comes and goes, whereas time is constantly spent and never comes back to you. And when we say spending time wisely, it doesn't just necessarily mean purely religious deeds. But spending time wisely can be something in this world, learning, learning a skill, learning something that can benefit you in this world and that can benefit other people as well. Islam is a complete way of life. It's a complete code. It's not just something that happens in the masjid. Don't forget that all of the acts of a believer, that all the acts a believer does can be transformed into acts of worship if, and only if, that you do them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, that there are religious deeds which are the best of deeds to do. Every one of us should be reciting some portion of Qur'an every day, even if it's just five or ten minutes. You should have some relationship with the Qur'an. But at the same time, don't forget that there can be many acts that can be rewarded if you change your intention and do them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be structured in your use of your time. Learn to prioritize and focus on a few things and do them with itqan, do them with perfection. Do not waste your time. When you have some free time, take advantage of it. The greatest thing that you can do in this free time is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the greatest acts of worship is to seek knowledge. Take a book out to read, listen to some tapes, listen to some CDs, listen to some talks. Do whatever you can to increase your knowledge. Attend some classes if you can online. And even talk to each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last piece of advice in this hadith is where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says that we should take advantage of your life before your death. How are we going to use this life before death comes to us and death will come to each of us? As for the person who is heedless of Allah, they're totally going to waste their time and totally going to waste their life because they will make this life their goal. Their focus in life is just to satisfy their every desire. Then on the day of judgment, they will be the ones begging Allah to send them back to this life so that they can use their time, their youth, their money, their health for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with life each and every single day that we open our eyes. None of us knows when this is going to be taken away from us. We can't guarantee that we will have a tomorrow to rectify the problems of our past. Every day we wake up, it's a new opportunity to do well. Spending in charity, worshipping sincerely, Performing a random act of kindness, helping other people. We sometimes don't realise that death could be imminent until we see or we know someone who dies unexpectedly. The final advice from the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is to take advantage of the time that our life affords us and everything that our life affords us, the opportunities that come to us to do good. Don't put things off for tomorrow because there might not be a tomorrow. And with that, I'll finish. Anything in this talk that has been beneficial to you was purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Glory and praise be to you, O Allah. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except you. I beg of you your forgiveness and repent to you. Ameen.